Hi, this is Prashant and I'll take you through a short video tutorial on SAS Enterprise Miner. So let's begin. To start, we'll create a diagram. We'll name it as Demo4. Now let's go ahead and import our file import node. We can import a file by clicking on import file and then browse it from a computer. We'll select the wine quality data and open this. You can preview the data before importing the file. As you can see from the data that we have certain attributes for the wine like residual sugar, citric acid, chlorides, etc. And we have a quality here which is rated from 1 to 10. This is the, our target variable that we are going to predict. So let's go ahead and import the variable file. Now we can edit the variables here. We'll click on edit variables. As you can see that we have all the attributes. This residual sugar should be an input. So we'll change it to input and we'll make quality as our target variable. You can observe that uh, the levels are interval. This is because uh, our variable is all numeric. So let's click OK. So now we are going to do some statistical exploration. So we can import the stat explorer node and we'll connect the nodes and run this node. As we can see from the results that we have a correlation plot. This shows alcohol as a positive correlation with the wine quality. This, and as we go down, we see that density has a negative correlation with the with the target variable that is the quality of the wine. If you look at the output, uh, you can see some stats of the different independent variables. We have the mean and the standard deviation. Moving to the variable worth, this shows that the alcohol is the most important variable in predicting our target, that is the quality of the wine. Now let's go ahead and create a partition for our data. We'll import the data partition node and we'll also add a control point. This is because we want to run multiple models from the same point. So we'll connect the data partition node and we'll look at the properties of the partition. We can assign the partition of the training, validation and test set as 60, 30 and 10. So now con connect, we'll connect the control point and we'll add a model which is the decision tree here. And we'll connect the control point to the decision tree model and we can look at the properties of the decision tree. As you scroll down you can see the maximum depth. We'll assign is at 10. This is the number of up to generations, up to 10 generations our data will be split. We can assign the leaf size as 8 and we'll keep the remaining as default. So we'll run this model and we'll see the results. So as you can see from this result that uh, there is a score ranking, we have the leaf statistics. So this is our decision tree that has been created. We can have a look. So this is the graphical representation of the tree. And if you look at the fit statistics, you can see that the data has been split into train, validation and test. We have approximately 3000 in train, validation has around 500. So if you move down, the average squared error for the training data set is 0.49, for validation it's 0.54 and for the test it's 0.55. Further, when we move down, we can look at the output of the model that we just ran. The variable importance, as you can see, is alcohol is the most important variable in splitting our data point. And we can see the number of splits that are there are four. So moving to the leaf report, we can see there are nodes and depth is there, training observations per node has been assigned. So the depth, as you can see, is not in a sequential order. This is because the tree is automatically pruned. Now let's go ahead and check the node rules. We can do that by clicking on view and model and then node rules. As you can see, the node rules basically describes the if and else condition that has been used for splitting the nodes at each iteration. So now we'll go ahead. So now we'll compare our model. We'll add a gradient boosting node. And we'll, we can look at the properties. We'll keep the maximum depth as 5. And we will add a model comparison. And we will compare our decision tree with the gradient boosting node. The gradient boosting is nothing but it just resamples the analysis data several times and generates the results of the weighted average. So we'll run this model and check the results. So as you can see from the fitness statistics that the gradient boosting performed better than the decision tree and the criteria was based on the average squared error 
which was 0.53 in case of the grain boosting algorithm and it was 0.54 in case of the decision tree. So that's all from this video. Thanks for watching.